Hello and welcome again. In the previous video, we talked about uh, the permutation ciphers. And we said that this is a very general uh, way of arranging the letters. Basically, what we're going to do is arrange the letters or rearrange the letters in the plain text to produce a cipher text. Now, we need a systematic way to do that. And a systematic way, basically, what it is, is something that uh, we can actually do uh, uh, very easily without having to actually go into the much details of what a permutation is, mathematically speaking. Now, the real, the real fan cipher or the zigzag cipher is one particular case of a permutation cipher that is going to allow us to do the uh, encryption in a kind of an easy way. Um, this, but this rel fan cipher is just one particular case of a permutation cipher that is going to allow us to rearrange the letters. There are some others here, of course. Uh, there are also permutation ciphers that are going to use another method to rearrange the letters. But for now, let's just look at this one, the rel fan cipher. So the situation is exactly the same in this picture I have. I have Alice and Bob that want to communicate, and Eve, of course, is always listening in here. But before every communication starts, they have to agree on a key. So they have to share a key. They have to agree on something. So the key here is the, the, the important part here for the real fence cipher. And in this case, for the real fence cipher, the key will be a natural number. And remember, what a natural number is, it's just uh, an infinite collection of natural numbers. It's one, two, three, fours, and so on. So the key will be one of these numbers here. Now, one important part that uh, is uh, here in the rel fence cipher is when you choose your key, you have to make sure that the key, uh, whatever the number is, is strictly less than the number of characters in the plain text. So that's very important. And the reason for that is going to come later. Uh, if you actually have the key bigger than the number of characters in the plain text, the uh, rel fence cipher is not really good. It's not really a cipher at all, actually. You always want to have your key extremely less than the number of characters that you have in the plain text. So in that case, if you want to send messages, then it's better to use a short key. So if you want to send messages, you won't want your key to be, for example, 8,000, because it's not going to make it very secure at all. So you want to choose your key to be small. In particular, it should be small than the number of characters in the plain text. So that's what we're going to do. Now, how this mm, real fence cipher works? Now, the name real fence in zigzag, you will see why it's called like that in a second. So once you decide, Alice and Bob decide on the key, assuming of course that the key is, is strictly less than the number of characters in the plain text, what we're going to do is we're going to construct a table. Now, the table is going to be made out of rows and columns. The number of rows that you're going to put in that table is exactly equal to the key that you chose. So it's actually equal to the number you chose in here. So for example, if you chose the number four for your key, then the number of rows will be four. So you have four rows. And the number of columns that you're going to have in your table is going to be exactly the same as the number of characters that you have in the plain text. So it's equal, in this case, it will be equal to the number of characters in the plain text. So you're going to make a table. And once you make that table, what you do is you're going to place the plain text in that table in a zigzag manner. And I will explain that in detail with the examples. It's better, it's better to look at the example to make this very clear. So let's look at the example now. So this is the example. The example is encrypt the message, meet me at the park, using, of course, the rail cipher. Uh, fence cipher or this zigzag cipher and we're going to assume that we are going to agree on a key of three so the key is actually small you see three here this is small than the number of characters that i have here in my plain text and remember that key should not be bigger than the number of characters there for example if somebody uh, is going to do this and say that my key is for example 30 that's not going to work okay and i'll explain that later but so for now let's just think about this the key here has to be less than the number of characters. So the number of characters in my plain text, so if I have to compute it, so you just have to go ahead in here and count how many letters you have. We're going to ignore the blank spaces that we have between the words, and we're just going to count the letters. 
So in this case, if you go ahead and count all these letters here in this plain text, then you will gonna find that is 15. So I have 15 letters here. And of course, because my key is three, according to the method for the zigzag cipher, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a table, we make a table that has three rows because that's the, num that's the key, key is three, and it has 15 columns. It'd be 15 is because that's the number of characters that I have here in my plain text. So I already made the table here. So this is the table. So in this table, I have uh, three rows. So this is row one, row two, row three. I have three rows. And I have 15 columns that correspond to the number of letters in my plain text. So it's one, two, three, four. Of course, I'm not going to count them all, uh, but you can go, go ahead and double check if you want. You can pause the video here and actually count that what I have that is 15 columns. Okay, so all the way from one through 15 columns. So once you have the table set up, so this table here, we're going to put the plain text in that table in a zigzag manner. So what do I mean by that? So what I mean by that is this. I'm going to start, of course, with the first letter of my plain text, the letter M. Uh, and I'm going to place it in this top corner here. So you always do that. You always start with the uh, most uh, uh, left top corner in your table. So you're going to start here. And I'm going to place the letter M over there. So if I place the letter M there, place the letter M. And I'm going to go diagonally. Diagonally means I'm going to go in this direction like this, this diagonal. The next letter, of course, is E, so I'm going to place it diagonally in there. So it's going to be E. The next letter is again an E, so I'm going to place it there, like that. And I keep this doing this diagonally. So if this is this diagonal, then I go up in the other diagonal, like this, this diagonal. So this diagonal first, this is the zigzag. You see how, to see why now this is called a zigzag cipher. So meet, so the next will be T. So I'm going to place it over here in this place. I'm going to ignore all the blank spaces. So for this case, we're not going to count those things. So the next letter will be M. So the next letter will be M. There. Okay. And again, zigzag. So once I reach this one, the top, I'm going to go down here in the other diagonal. So I, I'm up to here, up, I'm up to M, and then I have to write down E and A in the diagonal way. So it's going to be E and A. All right. Remember, this is all zigzag, zigzag manner. So I'm up to here at this point at A. So the next letters will be T, T, and I'm going to place them in that diagonal that you, I'm going to write down here, this is T. So I'm up to here point, as at this point, at this T. The next two letters will be H and E, and that will be in this diagonal. Remember, this is all the zigzag. So it'll be H and E. So the next letter will be H and E. Right. Now, let me finish this down. So now we have uh, the next letter will be P, A, and then it's going to be, of course, in this diagonal coming up. So P and A. P. Okay. And I'm almost done here. So the last uh, two letters that I have to put on my table will be the R and the K. So then it's going to be placed in this diagonal here. So it's going to be the R and the K. All right. So I placed the letters there in the in the plain text. I placed them in a zigzag way, right? zigzag, through this table. Now, how I'm going to take the um, ciphertext from there? So the ciphertext, so let me write it down over here, uh, ciphertext, ciphertext. The way you get the ciphertext from here is you're going to read from the table from row one through row, the last row, from left to right, the same way you read in English, so from left to right. So I'm going to start with the first row here is M, M, T, A. And you're just going to write down all that in that order. So it's going to be M, M, T, A. Some people put blank spaces when you end the row. So the next uh, one would be a space here. 
uh, it's better not to do it because it's gonna make the cipher a little bit more secure and so the next thing I'm gonna write down is the letters that are in the second row so the letters will be E so as you can see here B E T E T H P R so it'll be uh, E T E T H P R so I just put the, that row over there this row and of course finally the last row will be this one so I have to write down E A E K so if I do that it will be E A E K and so finally what we have is uh, this is going to be my ciphertext now uh, we didn't change the letters at all that's the point the point of the um, transposition cipher of permutation cipher is that you take the plain text that we had at the beginning is meet me at the park this one right here and we're gonna rearrange the letters and we rearrange the letters here so in my original message I had two M's that's exactly the same what I had here two M's that's the plain text and I'll have two M's in the cipher text so this will be the message that Alice will send to Bob through the insecure channel now that's the encryption the process of encryption uh, what is the process of decryption so the process of decryption is actually very similar because now Bob knows that the key is three so the only thing he has to do is again he has to count the number of symbols that uh, you have in here number of symbols and so once he can the number of symbols he will know what how big the table is and from that information he can recuperate the plain text but I will do that in the next uh, video so I will see you uh, in a little bit